Hi, I'm Faye Prothero. I'm the lead bereavement nurse for Cardiff and Vale University Health Board. I'm going to talk about the bereavement support service that was set up in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Shortly after lockdown in the UK last year, our bereavement nurse at the time, Tracy Skirm, recognised the need for increased bereavement support for those affected by COVID-19. An ambitious service was commenced, whereby all next of kin of those who died of COVID-19 in a hospital setting were contacted by telephone. With the support of the Assistant Director of Patient Experience, a team with the appropriate skill set was identified who could provide this unique but vital support. The ability and willingness of staff to adapt meant that this service quickly became a reality. The primary aim was and remains to be to provide emotional support for families and offer further support as and when required. The team are also able to signpost and address any queries the families may have. The frighteningly swift rise of COVID-19 cases and deaths and the subsequent lockdown left many families in utter despair. People have become bereaved and had to learn to grieve in a new and unique set of circumstances. Lockdown left many completely isolated. Even if families were living in close proximity, they weren't permitted to support each other in person. Neighbours couldn't pop around to bring a meal or check if the bereaved needed anything from the shop. There was very limited face-to-face -face contact and personalised support multiple bereavements. Sadly, many of the families we've spoken to have had more than one death within the family or amongst their circle of friends. And this has left some confused, angry, and sometimes feeling guilty for grieving for more, more for one family member and not another. End of life. Sadly, all too often families were not able to be with their loved ones when they died in hospital. And this has led to a lot of concern and anguish about the care their family member received in hospital and sadness that they were not able to be with them at that time. Some have also had difficulty in accepting that their loved ones have died because they were not permitted to see them at all due to COVID-19 restrictions. The bereavement process, the changes to the processes and procedures we follow after death have led to further anguish for families. Changes to how paperwork is completed has led to uncertainty and the inability to have a funeral and wake as in normal times has saddened many. So all of these elements have complicated people's ability to grieve. We wanted to ensure that the bereaved knew that there was support out there, someone who cares and someone who will listen. With regards to the initial implementation of the service, one of the first thing we needed was people to make the calls. So as mentioned earlier, in terms of staffing the service, suitable health board employees were sourced from various areas, including patient experience, concerns and chaplaincy, haematology and ENT. The service could not have existed without the support and flexibility of Cardiff and Vale staff, including our medical records team. The bereavement lead nurse composed a script for staff to follow, which, although it set clearly defined intentions for the calls, it could be adapted to suit the individual caller. From the outset, we needed to anticipate the needs of the bereaved. It was important for staff to be prepared for any queries that may arise. So the lead bereavement nurse collated a number of contact details for government and third sector agencies, which may help answer any queries that people had. It was also essential that we were able to deliver what we promised and provide ongoing support to the bereaved if and when it was needed. Links were set up with the local branch of Cruise and a local counselling service called Cause, whose counselling is not specific to bereavement. Subsequently, links have also been set up with City Hospice, who have expanded their counselling services. Again, we are so grateful to these organisations for helping us support the bereaved. The bereavement support service was developed very quickly in response to a situation unfamiliar to us all. As such, as the service has progressed, we have had to adapt and change to meet the needs of the bereaved. For example, initially, the service was set up to support the next of kin of those who had died of COVID. It was quickly recognised that the implications of COVID-19 affected every bereaved family for reasons mentioned previously, such as isolation and changes to the process of grieving. The service has had such a positive impact for our bereaved families that there are plans to continue with the service and expand to ensure that no family in Cardiff and Vale has to struggle with their grief alone. As many staff have had to return to their original roles within the health board, we've employed bank staff to undertake the calls, each bringing their own life experiences to the role. We've also retained one of the chaplaincy staff who wish to continue making the calls. 
We maintained a spreadsheet from the outset of the service to collect and review the call information. A person in the team has overall responsibility for maintaining the spreadsheet and compiling the information within it. Following the calls, the team forward the information to this nominated staff member who ensures that information is displayed clearly and accurately. The team has contacted over 2,300 next of kin since March 2020. Of those who died in our hospitals, 130 did not have next of kin or they were unobtainable. Just under 200 have required an immediate follow up from the team following the initial support call and over 100 of those who were bereaved have required an immediate referral for counselling from the third sector. Speaking directly to families has enabled us to gain feedback regarding the resources provided to next of kin upon the death of a loved one and regarding the care received whilst in hospital. When next of kin do not perhaps have the strength to contact the ward, we've been able to liaise and provide feedback, both positive and negative. This has served to strengthen our links with clinical areas and highlight the service within the hospitals. The feedback we've re received from the bereaved when making these calls has been overwhelmingly positive and highlighted just how invaluable a service it really is. People have thanked us for taking the time to call them, thanked us for caring. People who thought that they would never call and ask for support have after speaking to our team. People's feedback has confirmed that this is a very worthwhile service. There have been many key learning points throughout the delivery of this service, uh, appropriate timing. So as the service was being implemented, calls were made three to four days after death. And as death sadly increased, we were unable to maintain this and, and calls gradually shifted from days to weeks after the death. We are currently making calls six weeks after death. The grieving process is so unique and we are still learning through feedback as to the best time to call. We find that being accessible and approachable is essential because people will then feel able to contact you when the time is right for them. Staffing. We'll be forever grateful to those who gave their time to the service in its early stages. As they returned to their day-to-day -day roles, it became apparent that we needed a dedicated team to ensure that the service is sustainable and effective. These staff need training and support as we can never be sure what the person is going through at the other end of the phone. Knowledge. Organisations update and change their services frequently, but the pandemic has resulted in many adapting their services more than usual. Counselling services in particular have had to adapt to telephone and online support as opposed to face to face. We've had to maintain current knowledge of these changes and adaptations as the bereaved can have a very specific idea of what they need and want. Self-care. There's no doubt that communicating with bereaved families is emotionally demanding and it's crucial that our staff have support too. The bereavement nurse is available to discuss calls as and when necessary. A link has been set up with Cardiff and Vale Employee Wellbeing to provide counselling and support as required. Our chaplaincy team are also available as a means of pastoral support and the team have bi-monthly meetings in which they can discuss any issues or potential improvements to the service. In terms of future of the service, such has been its success that there is currently a dialogue at board level to increase staffing on a more permanent basis. A bereavement training package is in development for clinical areas throughout our hospitals, which will specifically outline our service. This information will also be incorporated in the current bereavement services booklet that wards distribute following a patient death. Learning and feedback from the repatriation of deceased property during the pandemic will also be featured. This is a hospital based service at present. However, as we progress, links have been forged with primary care and Welsh ambulance service to discuss how this could be replicated for community bereavements. If referrals do come in from the community, we ensure that support is provided. However, we cannot actively promote this as we do not currently have the staffing to provide the service. Following the pandemic, the bereavement lead nurse has been contacted by a number of Welsh health boards to learn more about the service that we're providing. It is hoped that new links will be forged and we can progress together to improve bereavement care throughout the country. This service is unique as the bereavement calls focus on the support we can provide on an emotional and well-being level. Bereavement counselling services are stretched and waiting times locally average three months. As a team, we ensure that even after a referral to another service, no one is left unsupported. We maintain regular contact and are guided by the bereaved on the frequency of the calls. The service doesn't close its doors on the bereaved and all those who require support will receive it. 
Thank you for listening.